the most wonderful time of the year. Maybe you're a huge fan of horror and will have seen everything on this list and are just watching for the fun of it. Maybe you'll find something you've never seen before. Or perhaps you're just trying to find something to watch in the month of October to get you into the spirit of the Halloween season. Either way, the one thing about the month of October that brings us all together is horror movies. Join us now as we list 13 horror movies to watch for Halloween. But before we begin, be sure to slash that like button and make sure you're subscribed as we are always posting horror-related content and we'll definitely be posting more lists just like this one. So light up that jack-o'-lantern and enjoy. Night of the Demons from 1988 Directed by Kevin Tenney, who also directed 1986's Witchboard, Night of the Demons follows a group of teenagers on Halloween night who all meet up to party at an abandoned funeral parlor. As you can guess, shit hits the fan, and their fun night of partying turns into a living hell. Night of the Demons is a great horror movie to get you into the Halloween spirit, even from the start of the film as the opening credits are filled with spooky animations accompanied by an awesome theme by Dennis Michael Tenney. The other great thing about Night of the Demons is that it has a perfect blend of comedy with serious horror tones. It's not a horror comedy, but there are definitely some funny one-liners to keep things fun. Night of the Demons features a lot of memorable scenes, like Angela, played by Amelia Kincaid, and her freaky dance number to Bauhaus's Stigmata Martyr. And who can't forget Suzanne, played by Linnea Quigley, and her lipstick. The gore effects, which are grotesque and still hold up to this day, were done by Steve Johnson, whose work you might have seen in the films I'm showing on the screen right now. Night of the Demons has that perfect 80s horror feel. Mix that with Halloween and you have a classic Halloween horror movie. If you have never seen this movie, you are truly missing out on the party. Oh, and do yourself a favor and stay far away from the 2009 remake. Trick or Treat from 2007. Directed by Michael Doherty, who would go on to direct another great holiday horror movie with Krampus in 2015, Trick or Treat tells several stories that all occur on Halloween night. The thing that is neat about Trick or Treat is the fact that all of the tales are woven together in such a unique way. If you have never seen the movie before, you are for sure going to miss little things here and there on your first watch. Watching it more than once is a must, as I am sure you will notice something that you missed your first time around. The movie also introduces us to Sam, who is both ridiculously cute and scary at the same time, but mostly cute. Mostly. Sam also has his list of Halloween rules, which is a great little addition and something you should live by in real life. There have been rumors of a sequel for well over a decade, but if I were honest with you, I think it should be left with just this entry. Don't continue it. But hey, maybe they will and it will blow me away, but I will be completely satisfied if they never made a sequel because Trick or Treat is a Halloween horror classic and is a must watch for the month of October. The House's October Built from 2014. The House's October Built is a found footage style movie that follows a group of filmmakers shooting a documentary about Halloween haunted houses. In their search to find a more extreme haunt, they end up getting themselves into more than what they bargained for. The documentary style haunted house scenes are a lot of fun to watch. It's almost like going to a haunted house, but in the comfort of your own home. There are a lot of creepy clowns and the porcelain doll masked girl is especially unsettling. The thing that I love the most about the house's October build is the ending. I am an avid believer that sometimes an ending can make or break a film. I'm not going to ruin anything for you if you haven't seen the movie, but I really do think that it ends perfectly. The same actors and filmmakers released a sequel in 2017, but I do not recommend it. Halloween from 1978 and... Halloween 2 from 1981. You're probably thinking, hey, that's two movies. Well, yeah, it is two movies for one entry on this list. But let me explain. I truly believe that these two films work great 
as a double feature. The biggest reason for that is the main fact that these two movies take place over the course of one night. That's right, Halloween 2 picks up mere seconds after Halloween concludes. With how the movie ends in the original Halloween, it feels like it's only right to go right into Halloween 2. And let's face it, the way Halloween 2 ends, it's a nice little conclusion to that storyline if you were to just stop watching right there. Also, I think it would be kind of cool if there was a Halloween 1 and 2 edit that blended the movies together into one long film. Halloween was directed by the legendary John Carpenter, and Halloween 2 was directed by Rick Rosenthal, who went on to direct Halloween Resurrection. In both movies, we get Jamie Lee Curtis as good old Laurie Strode and Donald Pleasance as Dr. Loomis. Halloween has Nick Castle behind the mask of Michael Myers, while Halloween 2 introduces us to Dick Warlock, whose portrayal of Michael Myers is probably my favorite in the entire franchise. Both films also feature that classic John Carpenter music. So, even though John Carpenter didn't direct Halloween 2, he was heavily involved with the writing, producing, and music on the film. The original Halloween not only has its place in horror history, but in movie history as well. I personally love Halloween 2, but I think it's mostly because it's one of the Halloween films we had recorded on a VHS tape when I was a kid. I must have watched that tape a thousand times. I'm surprised I didn't break it. Halloween is a legendary horror movie franchise, and Michael Myers is a slasher icon, so you can't have a Halloween movie list without mentioning either. A double feature of Halloween 1 and 2 will not only get the Halloween vibes going for October, but if for some reason you haven't seen these films, you will be seeing a piece of horror history. Terrifier from 2016 are you looking for something a little on the extreme side? Look no further than Terrifier. Released in 2016, Terrifier follows Tara Hayes as she becomes the obsession of the sadistic murderer known as Art the Clown. The story unfolds on, you guessed it, Halloween night. And I'm going to be honest with you, there isn't much of a story to Terrifier, but if you're looking for something that has the Halloween feels, over-the-top blood and gore, and some dark humor, then this is the movie for you. Although this isn't the first film to feature Art the Clown, that honor went to All Hallows' Eve from 2013, Terrifier shows us more of the crazed clown by giving him more screen time this time around, and even though he never speaks, he really steals the show in several scenes with his expressions and humor. Writer and director Damien Leone, who also serves as special effects artist, really goes all out with the gore. When I say this movie is bloody, I'm not kidding. Consider this your warning, but Terrifier delivers bloody Halloween fun. Tales of Halloween from 2015 A horror anthology film where all of the stories take place around Halloween night. For those uninitiated, an anthology film is a movie that is broken up into several smaller stories that make up the length of a feature film. Tales of Halloween has 10 short stories that make up its hour and a half runtime, so there is bound to be something you'll love. Each of the 10 stories are directed by someone different. The most notable directors are Darren Lynn Bowsman, who directed Saul 2, 3, and 4, Repo the Genetic Opera, and 2010's Mother's Day, Neil Marshall, who directed The Descent, and Lucky McKee, the director behind The Woman and the Awesome May. A movie with 10 different stories is bound to have a huge cast, and there are some notable people that make appearances in this film. For the sake of time, I'm going to run through their names quickly, but put a card on screen so you'll know what they're known for. Adrian Barbeau, Caroline Williams, Lynn Shea, Barbara Crampton, Mick Garris, Stuart Gordon, Pollyanna McIntosh, and Joe Dante. 
This movie is super fun, and like I said before, because there are 10 different stories in the movie, there is bound to be something you'll enjoy, all the while immersing you in the greatest holiday of them all, Halloween. Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, from 1983. I know some people watching this are immediately going to say, Halloween 3? Isn't that the one that doesn't have Michael Myers in it? Yes. Halloween 3 is the movie that doesn't have anything to do with Michael Myers. That movie is stupid. Well, I say to you, when was the last time you've seen it? Halloween 3 is a great horror film and a perfect movie to watch in October. The whole movie revolves around an evil toy maker named Connell Cochran. His company, Silver Shamrock, is producing a new line of masks for the Halloween season, although these masks are special. If you are wearing them when the Silver Shamrock commercial plays on television at midnight on Halloween, they kill you. The scene where they test this out on an unsuspecting family is classic. Dr. Daniel Chalice, played by the legendary Tom Atkins, seeks to uncover all the secrets Cochrane and the Silver Shamrock are hiding. But can he stop the evil plot from happening? I know Halloween 3 is the black sheep of the series, but although Michael Myers isn't in the film, there are some Halloween alumni that are part of this feature. Director Tommy Lee Wallace worked on the original Halloween and was even the man that altered the Captain Kirk mask into the Michael Myers mask we all know today. Nancy Kyes, who played Annie in Halloween, makes an appearance as Dr. Chalice's ex-wife. Stuntman Dick Warlock, who you might know as Michael Myers in Halloween 2, has a role in the film as one of Cochran's henchmen. There is even a small cameo from Jamie Lee Curtis herself as the voice on the loudspeakers in the town of Santa Myra, the home of Silver Shamrock. And then how could I not mention the brilliant score that was created by John Carpenter and Alan Howarth? Dan O'Hurlihy, who you might know from RoboCop, plays Connell Cochran, and he does a great job playing the role. He flips back and forth between nice old toy maker and evil mastermind very well. This movie has all the October and Halloween vibes one could ask for. So, if the only reason you have for not watching this movie is because Michael Myers isn't in it, then I feel bad for you. Satan's Little Helper from 2004 A horror comedy from 2004, this movie takes place on Halloween as a nine-year-old boy named Dougie meets who he thinks is Satan. However, it's really a serial killer dressed in a Halloween costume. As Satan's Little Helper, the boy unknowingly helps the man in his murders throughout the day and into the night. The movie is written and directed by Jeff Lieberman, who is most known for writing and directing Just Before Dawn from 1981 and Squirm from 1976. The movie stars Amanda Plummer, who you might know as Honey Bunny from Pulp Fiction, and Catherine Winnick, who you might know from the TV show Vikings, or Hellraiser Hellworld. Some might think Satan's Little Helper is too low budget for them, but there is a charm to the film that really makes it fun to watch. Also, the Satan mask looks awesome. I'm not sure if the mask was made specifically for the movie or if it was store-bought and then altered in some way, but whoever made it did a great job, and I love it. Dark Harvest from 2023 Directed by David Slade, who you might know as the director of the awesome film 30 Days of Night, Dark Harvest is about a small Midwest town in the 1960s that holds a bloody annual ritual on Halloween. The teenage boys of the town must stop a supernatural being known as Sawtooth Jack from reaching the church before midnight. That is the basic plot for the movie, but there are a lot of twists and turns throughout the film, so I don't want to get into too much detail in order not to ruin things for anyone who hasn't seen it. A lot of people gave this film low ratings on Letterboxd, and the only reason I can see as to why anybody would do that would be due to the ending, but honestly, I enjoyed everything this film had to offer. 
Sawtooth Jack looks so cool in this movie. The special effects and character design of Sawtooth Jack alone makes this film worth checking out at least once. In an age of CGI, it was refreshing to see a guy in a suit of special effects playing an unstoppable pumpkin head like monster. This is one recently released horror movie I'd gladly welcome a sequel. Trick from 2019. From the duo that brought us the 2009 My Bloody Valentine, director Patrick Lucier also served as editor on the original Scream trilogy, Halloween H2O, and New Nightmare. Writer and actor Todd Farmer, you might remember from Jason X, as not only did he pen the screenplay, but he also played the role of Dallas. Trick is about a murderer named Trick that returns every Halloween to terrorize a small town. The killer wears a combination of Halloween masks and face paint while brandishing a trademark knife that has Trick carved into one side of the handle and Treat on the other. The coolest mask by far is the evil pumpkin mask. I absolutely love that one. The pumpkin face paint is really neat as well. Without spoiling anything, of course, this movie does end with a twist that some might not enjoy, but everything that comes before that is slasher horror fun, with plenty of bloody kills that would even make Michael blush. There is plenty of Halloween imagery throughout the movie to get you in the spirit, lots of costumes, parties, and at one point even a haunted house. If you need any other reason to check out Trick, let me remind you that the legendary Tom Atkins has a small role in the film. Only someone as cool as him would appear in two films on this list. Murder Party from 2007 A horror comedy from 2007, Murder Party follows a man who finds an invitation to a Halloween party while walking home. He decides to attend the party after a small push from his cat, Sir Lancelot, but when he arrives, he stumbles into a group with the intention of murdering him for the sake of their art. What follows is a bloody and hilarious good time. Murder Party is written and directed by Jeremy Saulnier, who would go on to also write and direct Blue Ruin and Green Room. One neat thing about Murder Party is all the characters are dressed in Halloween costumes throughout the duration of the movie. One of them is dressed as a werewolf, another is from the Warriors, and the girl is dressed as a character from Blade Runner, I believe. And there are two of them dressed as vampires, but I won't ruin that whole interaction for you. The main character, who you can see in the poster, makes a suit of armor out of cardboard. Murder Party is such a cool movie that even the Radio Silence guys had Ethan dress up in the same cardboard costume when they made Scream 6. Not many people probably got the reference, but we sure did. Murder Party brings the Halloween feels while also being fun, hilarious, and bloody when it needs to be. Hell House LLC from 2015 some people don't like found footage style horror movies, but if done right, this style of filmmaking can be very effective. Case in point, I present to you Hell House LLC. The movie is about a documentary crew investigating the unexplained event that occurred on the opening night of a haunted house, taking the lives of both staff and guests. They are provided footage of the staff preparing the haunt for the upcoming Halloween season in the abandoned Abaddon Hotel, but the eerie footage just raises more questions. One thing that really makes this movie fun is that you get to see the inner workings of a haunted house and how everything comes together. Apparently, the location that was used for the haunt in the film is a real haunted house you can visit in Pennsylvania. It would be fun to walk through it one day just to say that I've been there. Anyways, if you have a chance to watch the director's cut, I highly recommend it, but only after you see the theatrical version. The director's cut shows a bit more in places and overall feels like you are watching it again for the first time. Found footage horror movies are a dime a dozen nowadays, but there are good ones out there. Perhaps there will be a found footage list soon. Hell House LLC is not only a great found footage movie, but it's a 
awesome Halloween horror movie. Just don't go down in that basement. The Witching Season from 2015. The Witching Season is a collection of original short horror films that all revolve around Halloween. Although this is presented like a television show with each short being listed as an episode, the entire season's runtime is 1 hour and 23 minutes, which is the length of an average movie, so you can enjoy all of its Halloween goodness in one sitting as if it was a movie. With any anthology, there is something here for everyone, but I also feel that the witching season, although being low budget, does a fantastic job capturing the atmosphere of Halloween. The intro for the witching season is very reminiscent to the now iconic opening credits of Halloween 4. It's no surprise that filmmaker and creator Michael Bailiff is responsible for the 2021 reimagining of the Halloween 4 opening titles that I saw pop up online a few years ago. The other thing that makes the witching season so great is that you can watch it for free right now on their YouTube channel. Well, that's our list. If you have any Halloween-related horror movie recommendations or any horror movie that you feel captures the vibes of October and fall, let us know in the comments. Perhaps it will end up on the next list. Once again, don't forget to subscribe for more horror-related content like this. Until next time.